have the coordinates so that if there are people who would like to attend, um, they can attend by calling in as well. Um, often the media like to participate, so they have call in instructions or the public has call in instructions, but your actual Zoom links will be embedded in the emails that are sent directly to you. Okay, so uh, welcome everybody. This is really exciting. So this is the first meeting of the Cultural Vitality Committee. And um, as I said, it's a very exciting time for culture in our community. We've had a lot of um, new money that's being invested into culture, um, as well as a number of initiatives that uh, are a lot we've been waiting a while for. So the cultural plan was um, developed and implemented. And uh, we have a lot of uh, fun, exciting initiatives that we're going to be working on over the next two years. So you know, thank you in advance for volunteering and uh, getting involved with this committee. Hi, Jane, how are you doing? I was just doing a little bit of an intro. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, so welcome everyone. Um, I thought we could uh, quickly start um, just by, uh, as part of the roll call, just doing a little bit of an introduction because there's some new faces and not everybody may know each other. So. Um, I'll start. I'm Virginia McLeod. I'm the manager of recreation and culture and um, yeah, we'll be one of the staff leads for this committee moving forward. And next on my screen, we'll go around uh, Heather. Um, and my name is Heather Bott and I'm the executive director of the Algoma Country, uh, Algoma Kinwabi Travel Association, otherwise known as Algoma Country Tourism. And Kathy. Hi everyone, I'm Kathy Fisher, the curator at the Ermitting or Clerg National Historic Site, and I've met about half of you before on the, uh, the cultural vitality group that from uh, Futures to and SSM and the beginnings of that cultural policy. So I am here as a staff resource for Virginia and Todd, not as an appointed member. And over to Todd. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Uh, I think I've met everyone on the committee, except for maybe one. So that's great to see everybody on board. Uh, oh, I'm the Arts and Culture Coordinator uh, with Future Sault Ste. Marie. And uh, yeah, I think this year we got a pretty stout work plan, um, but it should be a lot of fun activities that'll move things forward. So I'm looking forward to working with everybody. Thanks. And Miranda. Hey everyone, I'm Miranda Bouchard. I'm the artistic director at Thinking Rock Community Arts. It's great to see some familiar faces again, and I'm really happy uh, to meet some new folks tonight. Madonna? Hi, I'm Madonna Hilsinger. I'm here as a representative from City Council. Um, and I also um, have worked on all of the recent um, community plans and in particular the cultural plan and I'm the executive director of the Algoma Fall Festival. Sean? Hi everybody, my name is Sean Midas. I'm the director of Nordic Institute. Uh, we're a community-based research group affiliated with Algoma University and I am a uh, lecturer in the Department of Community Economic and Social Development at Algoma University as well. Um, uh, previously, I was on the uh, Cultural Advisory Board and the Arts and Culture Action Team with Future Sault Ste. Marie. So um, great to see a lot of familiar faces, but also great to see a lot of new ones too. So nice to see everyone. Katie? Hi everyone, my name is Katie Blunt. I'm the Executive Director with Habitat for Humanity, Sault Ste. Marie and area. And I'm really excited to be part of this committee. I worked with the Community Adjustment Committee in 2016. And so um, I now get to continue that work here today. Uh, Brent. Thanks, Virginia. I'm uh, the Director of Community Services here for the city. And uh, one of the most important divisions, if not the most important, is recreation and culture. So a little plug for uh, Virginia and the team. And I work closely with Kathy and Todd as well. I know Donna likes that aspect, so I'll highlight that here. I might not do it on every call, but I will here right now. So thanks, everyone. Not on the transit call. <laughs> Andrea. Hi everyone, um, my name is Andrea Piero. Um, I'm a visual art professor at Oma University. I'm currently the chair of music and visual art 
um, as well as modern languages. And I sort of started instigated 180 projects, um, which is a experimental art space on Gore Street um, in 2012. Alicia. Oh, goodness. Um, I'm Elisa Moore, and um, I'm I'm on the board of directors of the Sea Community Career Center, or sorry, oh, my goodness, Theater Center, and um, a member of the Sea Theater Workshop, and I'm currently studying my, in my, I, I wouldn't know it, but uh, in public relations and communications at the University of Leicester um, right now. Thanks. And Jane. Oh, I think you're on mute, Jane. I'm happy to be here today and meet all of you. I've met some of you, some of you are meeting you for the first time. Um, I wear different hats. I'm a great community member. That's one thing I normally want to identify with. I'm also uh, the current EDI officer at Goma University, a position I started last year in September. And I'm also the president for African Caribbean Canadian Association of Northern Ontario. Those of you who have had the opportunity to attend Black History Month, maybe we did meet there, even if we didn't talk one-on-one. -on -one. And I'm really looking forward to being a member of this community and contributing. Thank you. Okay, thank you everybody. Um, so yeah, so welcome. Um, so just to kick off the meeting, um, one of our first um, things that we have to do is we have to elect a chair and a co-chair for the committee. So I'm going to be taking a bit of a lead um, through the meeting. As well, since we didn't have a chair or co-chair, I couldn't send the roll call that we have to do for each resolution. So since we don't have electronic voting, every time we pass a resolution, I have to ask if you're for or against the resolution. So I'll be kind of helping with that um, once we've selected the chair for the meeting. So um, I need to have a Virginia, mover. Yes? Virginia, may I just interrupt you for one moment? I'm sure. so sorry. That's I'm wondering okay. if you could just remind all of us, I think there's a few people that aren't able to be at this meeting today. Could you fill us in on who's not here? Yes, so yeah, Thank thanks you. Donna, that's a good point, sorry. Um, we had two people that weren't able to attend uh, this time slot. So Jasmina, um, I, everybody may have been um, connected with her at some point or another, but Jasmine is the director and curator of the art gallery of, Gol of Algoma. And Larry Whalen um, will also be on the committee, and I believe he's been involved in different arts and culture um, initiatives and boards uh, for a number of years now in our community. So uh, they weren't able to be in attendance. So yeah, thanks, Donna. That was a good catch. Um, so. For the election of officers, uh, if I could ask somebody to move and second, um, resolve that the nominations be open for the position of chair of the Cultural Vitality Committee for 2021. Uh, Heather and Donna. And we have to do a roll call. So uh, Heather and Donna are four. Uh, Sean? Four. Uh, Katie? Four. Miranda? Four. Uh, Alicia? Well, she raised her hand. Oh, yeah, so four. Um, Andrea? Yeah, four, please. And yep. Jane? Four. Okay. Um, so the next step is if there is anybody that like to nominate somebody to be chair of the Cultural um, Vitality Committee. Are there any nominations? Donna? Um, I'd like to nominate Sean Mitas to be the chair of our committee. Okay. Um, and I have to call for nominations three times. So are there any other nominations? Any other nominations? And let's have any other nominations. So I guess that's over to you, Sean. Would you accept the position of chair? Uh, reluctantly. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not sure why it's so unpopular, but um, anyway, yes. Thanks for my nominator. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So seeing that Sean accepted, um, I need a mover and a seconder. Uh, resolve that the nominations are closed and that Sean Mead is nominated for the position of chair of the Cultural Vitality Committee for 2021. Okay, Katie and Andrea. All right, roll call again. Uh, Donna? 
Yes. Heather? Yes. Uh, <laughs> that was emphatic. Um, Sean, I guess you've already accepted. Katie and who passed? Uh, Miranda. Yes. Um, Alicia? Yes. And Andrea was a mover and Jane. Yes. All right, congratulations, Sean. <laughs> All right, the next uh, position is we also have a co-chair. So in the event that uh, Sean is unable to attend, the co-chair helps uh, with leading the meeting. So I need a mover and a seconder. Uh, resolve that nominations be open for the position of vice, ch vice chair for the Cultural Vitality Committee for 2021. So Adana and Sean. Okay, roll call. Heather. Four. Um, John, Katie. Four. Miranda. Four. Alicia. Four. Uh, Andrea. Four. And Jane. Oh. Okay, are there any nomination nominations for the position of vice chair? Any nomination? Nobody wants to help out Sean. <laughs> and, but we can nominate someone? You can nominate someone, yes. <laughs> I will nominate Miranda as the vice chair. Okay, are there any other nominations? And any other nominations? So seeing none, Miranda, would you accept position of vice chair? I accept. All right, great. All right, so we need a mover and a seconder. Resolve that the nominations be closed and that Miranda Bouchard is nominated for the position of vice chair for the Cultural Vitality Committee for 2021. Sean and Heather. All right, last roll call and then we can, actually not the last one. Um, Donna? Yes. Heather is good, Sean moved it. Katie? Yes. Uh, Miranda's already accepted. Um, Alicia? Yeah. Andrea? And Jane? Yes. Okay, great. Um, so the next step, uh, the big task tonight um, is obviously moving into the cultural, um, reviewing the cultural applications for financial assistance. So um, does anybody have any de declaration of pecuniary interest before we get into that portion of the agenda? Heather? Yes, I have two. Okay. Um, oh, oh. Do I tell you which ones they are now? <laughs> uh, yeah, because what I'll do then is we may order the applications so that you're not bouncing in and out. Oh, uh, that'd be great. Yeah. So we'll Okay, the to first to one is Thinking Rock Community Arts. Okay. And the second one is Living History Algoma. Okay. Uh, I was, who was that? Oh, Miranda, did, is that your hand? <laughs> Miranda? Yes, I'm connected to the Thinking Rock Community Arts application. Okay. Uh, who's next? <laughs> Alicia? Um, the Sioux Community Theatre Center and the Sioux Theatre Workshop, please. And Sioux, sorry, Sioux Theatre Workshop? Yes, please. Okay. And Donna? Uh, the Algoma Fall Festival. Okay. And um, I'm going to recuse, are we, we are at that point of the meeting, is that correct? We're moving into those applications. Yes. yes. Um, I'm going to remove myself from the meeting. I think that um, in my role as an employee of the Algoma Fall Festival, and additionally, because I am a Sault Ste. Marie City Councillor, I think it's inappropriate for me to participate in this discussion. Um, and um, um, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, thanks, Donna. All right, uh, are, is there any others or are we, oh, Sean? I was just waving at Donna, sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, I don't think for, I think for once I've actually resigned from <laughs> all of my other committees. Except for this one. Katie, Except did you have your hand up? 
Yeah, um, Virginia, because I didn't have an opportunity to review the meeting package, I don't think that I should participate in this. Uh, I don't think it would be fair. Yeah, which if, if you said so you didn't have a chance, and I do apologize, you didn't have a chance to look in, but you can, if you want to, you know, go through the process, um, you know, you may have some pieces that you pick up as you go through for scorings, like just based off of the conversation. So, you know, I'd, you know, welcome you to stay and go through the process with uh, the committee. Okay, yeah, I can stay and I just will part, uh, I will observe. Okay, um, is that it for everybody before we get into actually looking, Andrea? Um, I, I guess I just have some questions about the process. So we don't have to, if there's another moment for those later, or if now is good. Um, yeah, we, I can start answering some questions about the process. Absolutely. Okay. Um, I mean, just, you know, because as you said, this is recorded and it is um, made public. Um, are we presenting our scores during this meeting or are we sending them in to you after to be tabulated? Um, um, you can send, so it is a public meeting. Anything that needed to be redacted was removed from the applications that were included in the package. So we have redacted all of that information, but it is a public process and the funds are public. So, um, you know, if there is anything that's brought forward, it's, um, you know, you, you're welcome to share that again, you know, obviously being uh, sensitive and looking just completely at the application and the merits of the application. But okay. will we, when, at what point do we submit scores? Is that part of the meeting or is that coming it, after? Those, those were for your reference and it just to kind of help you determine, um, you know, how the, how they scored through the rubrics and then kind of what those recommendations look like. So um, you can keep those for your own notes. It was just to give a format so that you guys could have a worksheet to work off of as opposed to not having anything to go from. Okay, so then are we aiming to create um, a rubric scoring as a group for each application today? Yeah, I think what I'm hoping to have at the end is if we could kind of have that scoring and then it, it helps us to to go back to the applicants to say, you know, here's some of the things you're missing in your application because we do a follow up with applicants um, to say here's how you could strengthen your application in the future here's maybe what you're missing. And then really what we'll take in the resolution is kind of getting down to what the recommended dollar value will be that will form part of the resolution that will go out, but those sheets will then help us to provide feedback to each of the applicants so that they can strengthen their application in the future. Okay, that's great. That's, I think that's really important to give them feedback. Okay, so with that being said, we'll start going through the applications. Um, yes, Marina? Just to follow Donna's lead, I'm wondering if it's possible for me to step out of the meeting during the discussion of Thinking Rock's application and return following. Yeah, so what I'm thinking might be the easiest is if you're at your computer, if you want to log off, um, and then if everybody can, it will be patient, I can then send um, an email uh, to you to say jump back in on the Zoom meeting, if that works for everybody. So I'll just have to do a quick little note to get you to jump back in. Okay. The, the other thing you could do with um, the people that need to be reclused is make a breakout room and put them in it. I think you can make a waiting room. You're really testing my Zoom skills, Andrew. <laughs> I haven't had to do a breakout room yet. It's it's pretty easy. I tested it today in a drawing class. It works. Um, oh, did you? Okay. Um, do you know how to? Might do you know how to do it on the, it? Have the breakout room option on your bottom bar. Um, you hit that. I don't have breakout room on my bottom bar. Okay, so it could just be a different. It could be a different. Um, yeah, I know we were trying to figure out how to do it before, but yeah, that would have been probably a helpful thing for us to have. So, um, so yeah. So from there, Virginia, I'll, yeah, Virginia, I'm just gonna take a minute and and say goodbye to everybody, and I. Thank all of you for um, being willing to take your personal time um, and invest uh, your time and your knowledge and your skills in improving our cultural vitality in Sault Ste. Marie. And I do look forward to working with all of you in the future. And um, good luck tonight. It's a hard job, all of this, so. Bye, Donna. Um, Virginia, I, I know that uh, Jane's had her hand up for a while. 
Yeah, I just saw, I was just gonna, uh, thanks. Yeah, go ahead, Jane. I was looking for the icon where I could raise my hand and I didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying all possible ways to get your attention. Uh, Virginia was just wondering, because today is my first time, if um, it would be okay for me to observe and learn, and then the next time I'll be participating. Yeah, sure. If um, And I'm sure you have, you've been around in arts and culture for quite some time, so I'm sure you'll have some valuable contributions. Um, but I'm going to turn it over to Sean, because he is the chair, so I'll let you take it away, Sean. Um, the or do you want me to kind of go through as we walk through the applications or? Um, I, I, I think, I mean, I can, I can share a little bit also of my previous experience um, on doing these as well. And I, I would also rely on Heather because um, you've been through this twice, twice before, right, Heather? Three times. Um, so um that uh, uh I, I know that it can feel daunting as well because you feel like you have the fate of um uh the applicants in your hands as well so it and and it's a responsibility of course that we have to um uh exercise um uh w with care and understanding that um uh, that people did put a lot of work into um uh, the submissions that were made um uh, are, I, I guess uh, initially I just have a couple questions to clarify with you, Virginia. Um, is the discussion of the um, submissions, is that in camera or is that um, open? Um, that is, I th think we've had them in open before. So we've had it open to the public mm -hmm. um, as long as it's not um, identifiable um, as a person, so the organizations. So it gets to be a little bit tricky with some of them, but I think but most of them are either organizations or collectives that mm -hmm. have been applying. Great. Um, and um, the other thing is, is um, related to, uh, I, I think that we, as a group, we have um, some uh, decisions to make in terms of how we actually um, implement the scoring process as well. Um, those of you that have experience with groups like Ontario Arts Council or Canada Council will have probably experienced similar things where there is still flexibility even within um, the uh, policies and, and parameters that are laid out for how we uh, address these types of um, disbursements. Um, for how we arrive at a final score and a final um, uh, amount. Um, and um, I think that uh, it's worthwhile to have that discussion uh, initially before you begin looking at individual um, applications. Um, uh, I just want to make sure that I'm not going out of order. Uh, we're at this spot in the agenda, is that right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, great. Thanks, Virginia. Um, so I, I, Maybe what I, I, I don't know if I can, um, oh, I can share my screen, wonderful. Um, one of the things that, that I've uh, seen done at um, Ontario Arts Council in the past that's, that's been helpful, and I can monitor this, is um, you know, actually having the spreadsheet um, projected. Um, uh, the, um, uh, and then we can, uh, I can actually put in a running tally uh, uh, because we can go, uh, as we discuss each applicant, we can um, potentially set a rough estimate of, of what we want uh, or what we think is appropriate in terms of uh, the amount of funding to allocate to, to the applicant. Um, and then it provides a running total. It lets us know, you know, when we've, when we start exceeding that total, and then we can go back and start if necessary um start to trim back um those allocations um and uh the the other thing that i've seen that we've done also um with city committees in the past as well as and i've seen this done at um, um other arts granting organizations is that when we discuss um uh, applications um we alternate um, which member begins the discussion 
so a sense it, it becomes a bit of a rotating chair in, in terms of guiding that discussion um, um, in the uh, um, uh, 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 in terms of the allocation of those 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 funds and and um, um, what the applicants are are uh, submitting as well. Um, now that doesn't mean that we have to do it that way. If you want me to provide an introduction to um, all of them, uh, we can do it that way too. Or we can, if if there, if there are other ideas, I'm certainly open to that as well. Um, but I think that um, um, that uh, that can allow us to to rotate. Um, and, and each person, um, also I, I think that it's a generally good practice because it encourages us all to get comfortable um, um, uh, taking the floor. And especially as the first meeting of, of this group, uh, I think there's some, some value to that. Um, and you want to open up the floor to discussion on either of those points in terms of our process for, for tonight? Um, please, if, if you have any thoughts or opinions, you can either just unmute yourself or signal that uh, either waving or uh, under reactions, you can raise your hand. Uh, I see Todd, then Heather. Mm -hmm. And I think Andrea has her hand. Oh, right and now. Andrea. So Todd, Heather, Sorry, Andrea. I, just, I missed um, who moved and seconded us into reviewing this uh, item, business item. Did we yeah. have that, Virginia? I don't uh, think no, we... the motion um, is for when we actually make the record. Oh, when we're finished. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um, I was just going to say, I like having the worksheet live so that we can see what's going on. Because we kind of did that um, at the previous committee. We had, um, I think it was between Virginia and Chris used to do that. They would kind of keep a running tally when we can meet in person. But I think digitally would be great. Um, I'm okay if we do a rotation um, with each application, but because we have a lot of new people, if they're not comfortable, if Sean, if you want to take the lead, I'm fine. I'm fine with it, that second one either way. So, great, Andrea. Thanks. Um, so, I guess one of the things I was thinking about in terms of allotting funds, um, usually at the OIC, um, when the committee ranks, they just provide the ranking and then it's up to um, the Ontario Arts Council to determine the amounts. Um, but if, if we're determining the amounts together, the things that I would like to see added to the spreadsheet are the asks, or this is what I've done to my own spreadsheet. I've added the, a column for the asks and then a, the other column just to add up the recommended funding. Um, and I think if we come up with a basic structure to start with, and I realize we might have to adjust it because we have a really wide range of, of the types of asks in terms of amounts, um, but just starting with something like if it's, if they're scoring in the top percentile, like 14 or above, maybe they get 100% of the ask. If they're between 13 and 12, they get 80% you know, there, that there's a sort of mathematical equation, um, or it could be a direct numerical percentage based on the percentage out of 15 that they get. So I think that's a fair way to start, but it, then adjust from there. Um, the one other thing I'd like to add is that um, I do think um, if we start thinking about other elements that we maybe need to include for future, um, future juries like this, in terms of other components to the applications that are necessary to like really be able to effectively evaluate the artistic and cultural merit. Um, I, I know I found I was often at a loss to be able to um, evaluate that based on the application. So um, I think there's just a few other things we might, maybe it's another meeting after, after this to look at the structure. That sounds good. Thanks, thanks, Andrea. I see a lot of um, people. Um, oh, sorry. I'm just looking at the uh, at the chat, and I realize I've I've neglected a few questions and comments. Um, but I I just wanted to mention that I saw Heather and Miranda. I think note agreement with um, the process that Andrea proposed. Uh, I see Alicia also nodding. Um, we're going to go to Virginia to clarify something, but I also just want to. Um, first, go to Jane um, on, a, on a question. 
Sean, this was actually my previous question. Oh, I'm sorry. And I did ask it, thank you. Um, so just to build off of what Andrea was saying, we're kind of in a bit of a transition this year. Um, the actual new terms for the application process were approved at the end of November, but we released the grant applications prior to that to give all of the organizations time to apply. So we're kind of using the old guidelines. We're gonna be transitioning to the new, but I think as we get into doing the workshops, which we plan to do with the um, applicants, uh, to help them fulfill, like to have, you know, go through what's required, what we're looking for when we're evaluating. I think taking a good look at those will help. And then we can actually potentially add some stuff in to really clarify, you know, how the evaluation goes and what we're looking for in those applications um, in order to evaluate them as Andrea indicated. And then I have um, Todd and then I'll respond to Kathy's question, which I, again, sorry for neglecting that. Thanks, Sean. Uh, Virginia, yeah, Virginia just touched on kind of what I wanted to kind of go into a, just briefly now. We'll go into it in more detail is, yeah, there is a new application that we're working on that we're hoping to implement in like fall of this year that'll be for 2022. And in a lot of that, it'll remove a lot of this ambiguity and um, kind of the diversity of ways of writing these applications that we see into a more unified, uniform, easy to find and follow information through. Um, so I think it'll make it easier on everybody and you know it'll be much easier when review time comes. Um, I did take the rubric evaluation worksheet and I filled it in of my own, but I have it so we could do the running total. If you like, I could email it to everybody, but it's got my kind of numbers in it, but you could change those to whatever you wanted. If you wanted to use that just as an aid in the meeting right now uh, to get that running total, or are you just gonna, like, I'm trying to figure out how- I don't think that'll be necessary. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 have a, I have a blank sheet. Okay. I have, and I have the, my USB stick plugged in so that once we are getting to where we're looking at putting some of those amounts in, I'll be able to share my screen with those amounts for everybody to see where we're at and uh, what the difference will be that we have to put in. Okay, thank you. Sorry, just waiting for my computer to catch up with me. Um, the uh, I, I do have a sheet ready that's that's um, added the columns that Andrea's noted as well, the requested funding. Um, and the um, uh, at the bottom also I've added a, a row for um, recommended funding and then a column that, or sorry, I should say a row um, that uh, keeps track of whether we are over or under. Um, I'm just seeing, normally I can share just a tab. Um, oh yes, there we go. Okay, is that clear? I just want to check in with everybody. Is that clear that you can see um, the tab? Uh, it is empty at the moment, uh, but I'll do my best to um, uh, fill in uh, the requested funding as we go. Um, I, um, in terms of leading the discussion, I know a number of us weren't able to um, review uh, all of the um, applications uh, before our meeting today. Um, so I, I do want to affirm though that, that um, many of the discussions that may emerge are not necessarily um, specific to um, applications. They may, um, as we go through these, in my experience, um, larger issues come up for discussion that lead the direction of, of the group, right? So questions of what are the um, general priorities that, that um, um, uh, an emphasis that should be uh, added there. And so for those of you that didn't have um, the opportunity to re review specific applications, please do feel free to continue to weigh in on those discussions. Um, uh, your voices are every bit as much as valued um, irrespective of um, um, the, your, your perspective on individual applications. Um, 
some some items are are not relevant um, to to any one specific applicant. Um, so um, with that, um, I wonder if um, I can have a volunteer to lead us off, starting with um, uh, Algoma Arts Festival Association and, and their application. Can I volunteer, Heather? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to pick me. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, just just um, one question. Because we're in a pandemic, are we putting like a COVID lens on these applications? Because we don't know how long this is going to last. So is it safe to assume that we need to look at these applications right now, specifically this year, with a bit of a COVID lens? I would think so. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll jump in too. I, I think we need to. Um, you'll know that uh, on the documents that we sent, there were a number of organizations that didn't reapply and asked to have their funds carried over. They did try to do stuff in the fall seasons, but many of them felt that with what's happening right now, they may not be doing spring events, so they have carried over. So I do think we need to be, um, it has impacted arts and culture significantly. Um, that sector has been hit very hard with COVID. So I do think that, you know, we need to have that flexibility with the COVID lens given the current situation. I see okay. Andrea's hand up and then Todd. Yeah, I think, um, you know, just right now, all of the Canada Council and Ontario Arts Council applications have a required field where artists have to indicate what their COVID plan is or how it impacts their project if it's not impacted um, and have contingency plans. Um, and yeah, just, you know, they're not funding things like travel. So I think since all the other agencies are taking that into account, we should too, even if it wasn't explicit in the call. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Andrea. Um, and uh, before I go to Todd, I just wanna uh, um, speak to a point that I meant to um, initiate this discussion with, which was, um, you know, some of you are familiar with the process already, but but uh, for those of you that for this is for whom this is your first time, uh, especially if this is your first time reviewing grants generally, um, uh, I, I I want to um, just express also that um, uh, it, it's really important for us to approach this um, work with respect um, for um, uh, all of the applicants. Um, and the work that they've put in, uh, the challenges that they've faced in light of COVID, um, and also the challenges that they face in light of um, running arts and culture organizations or, or, or projects uh, generally um, in um, not just challenging times, but challenging circumstances. Uh, it's often um, been hard to, um, uh, to do that in, um, uh, in our community. So um, we bear that in mind in the discussion. Uh, uh, that move forward. Um, and uh, uh, Todd. Thanks, Sean. I just wanted to mention, I did speak with almost all of the applicants and just to ask and like reach out to what were their plans and whether or not they planned to apply. And then kind of if they did have a plan for if COVID carried on, uh, many of them said that they would push their event dates later into the year. Um, and we had a few that, uh, you know, were projects that could be completed that were kind of independent of COVID. So I think there was a little bit of changing of some plans so that people specifically made their applications to do things that were kind of COVID proof in some cases. So um, I think people were pretty aware of the issues there. And uh, I think, you know, they did a fairly decent job or did a lot of kind of reorganizing of their regular activities to support COVID. So uh, yeah, definitely, uh, I think most of the applicants were aware of or had a plan for that. Uh, even if it may or may not have been reflected in their application, I did talk to a number of them. Unless there are other questions, Sean, do you want me, do you want me to start? Um, um, I, you just have one question. 
Um, Go for it, Andrea. Yeah. So just because the the applications are numbered, so I imagine this is um, you know potentially because uh, disqualified applications were taken out, or do we assume you know have all of these applications been um, sort of considered qualified, or has there been a preliminary culling first? I can speak to that just to, in terms of the numbering, and then I'll go to Virginia to fill in any gaps that I missed. But um, the, the numbering results actually from um, uh, uh, also applicants from last year. Um, so um, this is uh, Algoma Arts Festival is number four because one through three um, that applied last year did not apply this year. Is that correct, Virginia? Yeah. Yes, yeah, that's correct. So. Um, one of the attachments that we gave you that showed the 2020 applicants because they still have to provide post-grant reports or in some cases have requested the funds be carried over. Um, that's where the numbering came one through 28. Um, so that's why it's slightly off when you're looking at the numbers. Uh, we didn't disqualify um, anybody. So the applications that were submitted are all here um regardless of whether they have all of the attachments and requirements so they're there for your uh, review and i think that's a, that's an important point as well you know we have had applicants in the past where the committee has decided that they don't meet the criteria for the fund um and uh um that's part of the feedback uh, and, and outlining why that is, is is part of the feedback that that can be provided um uh, and, and related to that question, uh, I have one for you too, Virginia. Uh, item number 20, Sioux Theatre Workshop, Theatre Ontario Festival. Mm -hmm. That seems to be more of a request for carryover. Right. Um, and so there's not real, that's not really something that we discuss here. Is that correct? Uh, no, that's why the requested funding was there. But we do have to approve the request okay. for carryover because it, does, it is a change in their application. Okay. Um, when we do get to that point, I can go through what they had requested originally and now what they're asking. For the right. My memory is coming back about that one. So I understand. Yeah. Um, any other questions before you begin? I don't see any. Um, and bear in mind that as I'm presenting, um, I have to scroll through. Uh, the Zoom windows. So if you're waving your hand and I miss it, uh, do just unmute yourself, shout out. Um, and uh, without any further ado, so thank you for being so patient, Heather, and uh, you can take it away. All right. So um, I, 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 this application, I, I do have some reservations on the fact that in, in looking at with COVID, there does not appear to be any type of plan for um, if they can't have the performances, the large gatherings, because generally speaking, this art festival is, is, a, is a large audience in no matter what type of aspect it is. So that did kind of concern me. Um, the fact that there was no plan to, if you can't have, host it, what is the alternative? Um, I mean, certainly it meets all the under other criteria, meaning incorporation, you know, everything on the checklist was done. Um, but then the other part of me said, you know, it's not their fault that they couldn't host their event because it's a pandemic. Do we give them funding to, you know, ensure that they, they, their survival? Because clearly from the report last year, their dollars were used to um, help with some of their administrative costs that they needed to do. Um, so I just, I, I would have preferred to have seen some type of, you know, um, can we bring some workshops online? Can we do like small, you know, physically distance things? Like I would have liked to have seen that, but I don't know if Todd in speaking with that applicants, um, if that came out in the conversation. And uh, just a point of uh, uh, process, I guess, um, what I'll do is uh, we'll, we'll get comments from all of the reviewers first and then go to staff for clarification on, it, uh, on issues just to keep things moving along because it's already almost 5.30 and we've, uh, I suspect we all wanna get done uh, before seven. Um, and, uh, um, also, I would I, uh, if you do have recommendations for um, 
uh, scores within um, the organizational and financial health, artistic and cultural merit and, and community impact, please do share those. Um, uh, I don't know if you wanted to, to add to that, Heather. I... Oh, Heather, you are um, muted. For some oh, reason. whoops, sorry. Yeah. Um, I was just gonna say to you in reviewing their financials as well, they, they are carrying uh, a deficit. Um, it continually seems to build because uh, it, they did apply last year and in my experience, um, it, I, I think this is an organization that is in trouble. But like I said, at the same time, it's a long withstanding organization that does provide a huge community impact, I think at its best. So I, I honestly, I have very mixed feelings about this application. So if anybody could provide me the information or, you know, that's, I've said my piece, so I'm good. <laughs> uh, next I have Andrea. Thanks. Yeah, the, the big question, well, one of the questions, Heather brought up some of them that I had for this application, but the other um, was that they were specifically asking for funding for um, a learning festival, um, festival of learning, but there's no description of what that actually is. Um, so I would just think, you know, uh, on an ask of this size and an organization with so much history that there could be a, um, a bit more fleshing out what the actual um, ask is for. Um, so without knowing what that is, it just, it just sort of assumes it's, it's riding on its coattails, I think. Um, so again, I think it, you know, does well with community impact, but um, questions about what the community impact is going to be uh, if the event can't be held conventionally and doesn't adapt. Um, and then, yeah, definitely less lower scores on organizational and um, artistic cultural merit, because again, we can't see what the content of the portion being that we're being asked to fund is actually going to contain what artists uh, are in that programming. Thanks, Andrea. Uh, do you have recommendations for for um, uh, scores? Um, I had it at um, three for organizational and financial health, three for artistic and cultural, and four for impact. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just going to go down uh, my list, uh, and and if you if you want to pass, you are welcome to pass. But but please um, do weigh in with your uh, assessments as as you can. Jane, I'll pass today. I'll just observe. Thank you. Thanks very much, um, Miranda. Generally looking at this application, I would have liked to have seen more information about everything. I'm really nosy when I'm reading applications. I wanna know the story of the organizations and I wanna be able to understand what they've done, what they've come through, what they're applying for. I didn't get as much information as what I would have liked to have seen in this application. Um, some of what Heather and Andrea have shared already, I, I agree with. Um, I, to their credit, I do really appreciate seeing two different budget scenarios, factoring in sort of a big budget picture um, and more of a bare bones budget. Um, to me, that definitely speaks to um, the experience behind the festival and the leadership at the festival. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Miranda. Sorry, I realize that I keep not muting myself. So if you can hear typey noises, my apologies. Um, uh, do you have recommendations for scoring? My recommendations are similar to what's already been shared. Next, I have um, Katie. I know that you've expressed that you want to, to observe, but please do feel free to, to weigh in if you. Um, I'll pass. Uh, next, Alicia. Um, so I think I think a lot of this has already been said. Um, uh, so just to be clear, I went through all the applications and I, I made some, I guess, some scoring recommendations throughout and made some light notes. So I don't have too much to share, but I was kind of expecting a little bit more. Um, I was generous with my scoring, I think, because uh, it was one of the first that I'd gone across. So I had four all the way across. Great, thank you. Um, 
and that is, I think that's all the non non staff members. Um, uh, so I'll, sh I'll share my perceptions as well. Um, I had uh, uh, similar scores. I did have organizational and financial health actually at a four this time um, because um, for the same reasons that Miranda mentioned uh, as well. And um, uh, also because of um, the, uh, um, you know, my perception was that um, based on the, the um, um, budget scenarios, yes, there was uh, an accumulated deficit that was, was increasing over time. Um, but it seems like um, this past year um, has in, in some ways been somewhat of a, a, a saving grace in the sense that it's allowed it to kind of regroup financially. Um, that, um, uh, uh, but of course my, my interpretation may be off there, but that's, uh, uh, that was my rationale for the four. Um, now, uh, I don't know if, sorry, uh, Andrea, is your hand up for, for an, uh, oh, sorry, okay. Um, then I'll move to um, Todd, then Virginia, if you have any uh, additional uh, comments in relation to the questions that have been raised. Uh, did you want to go ahead because you were working with um, the calls with all the applicants? Sure. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I agree. My numbers are very similar to what was up there. Um, and there's a number of these organizations also looking kind of from uh, a higher level down that, you know, these are the kind of the organizations we're trying to build to create that infrastructure for arts and culture in the city. So. It's one of those ones where, you know, COVID hit a lot of people. There was multiple organizations that are running a deficit. Um, so in this case, like it's one that's been established. It's been up and down before. So it's, uh, I like I would think fund it um, just from that perspective. If we lose all of our sort of cultural organizations uh, that totally pulls all the momentum out that we have gained in the last little bit on trying to build everybody up. So it's one of those things where, you know, there are some things I would love more detail. Like I was a bit stressed when I was reviewing these things just <laughs> because there was such a lack of in some of them, um, but also understanding that the organizations are like volunteer organizations, right? And those folks have other things going on in their lives and COVID has been pulling them in a million directions. So not making excuses for anybody, but I think, you know, there are, there are, they have been around for a long, long time. And I think they're important to the arts and culture sector in general. So I would maybe take that perspective in, into account when making a decision. Thanks, Todd. Um, Miranda? Oh, sorry. Yeah, we'll go to Miranda and then, um, uh, then to Virginia. Just, uh, uh, not pointing to anybody in particular, but just saying, um, let's keep our comments brief, um, uh, if, uh, if they can be. Okay. Just really quickly to say the overall review of these grants really highlighted for me the different kinds of structures of organizations that are feeling the effects of COVID during this time and how those effects are being felt. For example, um, organizations that have ticketed seasons versus smaller organizations that don't sell tickets and don't worry about subscriptions and memberships and things like that. Thanks, Miranda. Uh, Virginia? Um, I was just going to say quickly that, you know, I think also this highlights some of the um, things we need to do to improve our future application process so that it's clearer as to exactly what we're looking for from a lot of these applicants. So I think there's an opportunity to improve that, and I think the committee can assist with it. I think Kathy had um, something she could add about the Festival of Learning. Oh, that's a, a great point. I, I, I... I wanted, to, uh, and Kathy, I'll address your, your question that I still haven't answered um, after you uh, share what, uh, what you have. Um, yeah, just to sort of answer the question of what the Fall Festival does with the Festival of Learning, um, they bring in artists and, um, of every type from um, 
every type of performance and they do the artist goes to schools so the learning the festival of learning is that an artist will share their skills in workshops and do a presentation to the schools at the same time all the uh, the art gallery the ermitinger uh, I I'm not sure who else also participate in the Festival of Learning. So it depends on what we can offer during that program. But it is a partnership with the school boards. The school boards do a lot of the coordination and busing. So this budgeted amount that has been put in this application and from what I read in the detail is just to help get some of the fees to those artists and pay their transportation and accommodation to come to Sault Ste. Marie. Um, and to your, point, uh, to your point, Kathy, I just wanted to mention that um, uh, it probably is wise if you step out during the Living History Algoma, um, but just, just for that application, there's no need to. Um, uh, Andrea. Yeah, so Thanks, Kathy. I think, though, I think a lot of the points that you covered were in the application. So I think when there is um, an application where there is the potential or they are indicating that artist fees are going to be paid, they don't necessarily have to indicate which artists will be there, but there should be an indication of what process is going to be used um, to select artists for that funding uh, or for those positions. And, you know, maybe <clears throat> I mean, I guess, yeah, you look on their website and see the past artists chosen so you can get an idea, but it just that it wasn't included in this application. So again, that's something that we need to sort out in our, you know, asking for more clearly. Um, but yeah, there's just no indication of how they'd be chosen, selected, curated. Thanks, Andrea. Um... I, I did want to highlight, so what I have done so far, and you can see on, on, on the screen, uh, what I've done is actually average out the scores that have been stated. That's one way to go about scoring. Uh, an alternative way is to um, develop a consensus. Now that can take longer, but the, the, I, I leave it to the discretion of the committee, which approach you prefer. Um, uh, so if you have any preferences, I know that we're taking a while to get through this one, but you know we're working out the bugs as we as we go, and we'll become more efficient as we go. Um, uh, any comments? Uh, and or or has the discussion changed anybody's score? I just have a question, Sean. Based off of what um, everyone's discussed so far, is it possible to allow the applicants to amend their application to maybe highlight more of what they would build out say um with a covid plan or a workshop like or like to like do some e-learning or something is that possible um i would def I, I would um yeah I'm virginia <laughs> <laughs> um I, I would say it depends. And again, this is where we're caught between two processes. We're using the new rubrics to start to try to help that scoring, but we still have the old application. So we're kind of caught in the middle. Um, if we did want to get more information back, we wouldn't be recommending amounts at this point. Um, and we'd have to have another meeting to do the final recommendations. Um, so I mean, that's completely doable to postpone and not have a resolution tonight and then move forward with clarifications and ha at the next meeting, um, what it would do is just delay the, the funding allocations and the process of getting the money out. So, um, I mean, that's something that is possible for the committee to consider. Well, that's great to know. Um, uh, Andrea. Yeah, I, I think it's good to know that that's an option. I think if we did take that option, we would have to bring any question that we have for any applicant forward to keep it fair. I think when we have an applicant pool that their ask exceeds the budget, then to then go back and allow more information to come in, um, we have to then do that to all of them. And then I would say, you know, we put out blanket questions rather than individualized questions. Yeah. That's a uh, good point in terms of the, the fairness of the overall process. Um, the, uh, are there any other comments? 
Miranda has one in the chat um, that perhaps it's a COVID contingency plan request that's offered to everyone as a condition of accepting funding that's offered. That's a very good point. Uh, Sean? Yes. Uh, yeah, I just want to follow up a little bit on that transition between old and new guidelines and applications. So we, uh, all these comments that you're saying are excellent because these are all things that we've kind of in the draft version of the application incorporated to remove all of these little what ifs and oh, what about this and that. So that, like I mentioned, all, all of the information will be almost templated for everyone. So they can just plug in their stuff and it'll give us all the information that we are looking for. So like we're trying to get that done and out by next fall. And so we're looking at this as kind of the last time we'd use that old kind of system of the application because the application is very broad and the new guidelines are a little more specific. So this is where we're bumping into these things like Andre and others have mentioned that, you know, uh, oh, we should incorporate this. That'll be all kind of rolled in in the application. So keep throwing out these comments because it's either something we can add at this point or it's something that you're reconfirming something that we were planning on putting in anyway. So this is excellent. And please just keep throwing that feedback uh, out there. Thanks, Todd. Um, any other uh, change, uh, questions or changes to opinions based on the discussion of this particular um, applicant? Seeing none, um, I would say that um, I think it's probably best if we reconsider the uh, funding allocation after we've scored. Um, uh, that seems to be the general consensus from nodding heads. Okay, um, so let's move on to the Algoma Conservatory of Music. Uh, do I have a volunteer for leading that discussion? Um, if not, I would defer to the next member that's on my list, which is Andrea. Oh. Great. Okay, great. Um, so I'm just trying to look at my scores. I don't have thorough notes. Um, so for me, uh, they ranked a little bit higher um, in terms of organizational and artistic and cultural merit. And I think they've had a really um, continuing long, um, you know, impact on the community. Um, some of my my bigger question around artistic and cultural merit was um, in terms of the diversity of the artists that the grant was supporting, um, just that it's a group of all uh, white male artists. Um, so that, you know, would stop it from being like a five in terms of artistic and cultural merit. So I had four across the board. Um, the other, I did have some other sort of technical questions because there are some, um, collaborations or initiatives to do with the university that are being mentioned in it that aren't for sure. I know um, Ed is pushing hard to make those happen, but um, I don't think they're sort of fully finalized yet. Um, but I think overall the projects that they're working on there are excellent. So I had four is across. Great. Uh, th thanks, Andrea. Um, we'll go to Miranda. I what I think is quite aligned with what Andrea has already shared. I was um, very inspired by this application. Um, I really appreciated the level of detail. Um, and getting to understand a little bit more about the organization as well as their aspirations for the future. Um, I thought that the, the financials and, and the plans that were provided um, demonstrated a high level of organizational and financial health. Um, and yeah, nothing, nothing else to add to what Andrea has already said beyond that. Thanks, Miranda. Um, do you have um, scores or were they approximately the same? The only difference was um, I had given, I had given them a, so I had given them a higher number for artistic and cultural merit, but what Andrea has said changes my mind. I would not change the scores. 
Um, next, I have Alicia. Um, yeah, it looks like a really good application. Um, looks like they'd be able to reasonably deploy the projects that they were undertaking. Um, my my assessment was five, five, and four, and I'd probably now, having heard the discussion, probably go with five, four, and four. Um, great. Um, next, I have Heather, unless uh, Jane or Katie wanted to weigh in. I know. Uh, okay, just checking. Um, uh, Heather. I have to say, this is an excellent application. Like, I was really impressed by the amount of information that we received. Um, it's really well thought out. Um, I gave it a to be honest with you, I had fives across until Andrea brought up her point about diversity. Completely, I agree. And it didn't hit me until she said it. And I went, yes, you are right. Um, that would have been, I think, um, that would have been nicer to have a more variety of people. <laughs> so yeah, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to agree with everybody um, with the scoring. Absolutely. Great. Did, uh, did you still want a five for um, artistic and cultural merit? Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good with four. Okay. Yeah. Um, and, um, oh, so that's change there. Um, I also had a, uh, similar scores. Uh, I did have a five for, uh, organizational and financial health. Um, but, uh, other than that, um, the other scores ring true um, with, with my perception as well. Um, okay, uh, any other comments, questions so far? Um, um, oh, Katie mentions that she has to excuse herself uh, for the remainder of the meeting. Uh, and thanks for allowing her to observe. I look forward to working with everyone on this committee. And Katie, I just want to uh, assert um, you know, we're very lucky to have you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to working with you as well. Thank you, everyone. I look forward to seeing everyone at the next meeting. Bye. Great. Um, Sean, did you want comments? Like I talked, like I said, with most of these organizations, did you want any comments from me or no? Or are you good? I don't think so, unless it um, uh, unless it's elicited by questions from uh, from the um, panelists. Just because that's the practice that I've observed in um, venues like the Ontario Arts Council. Um, certainly, um, staff will have a lot more. Uh, connection to the to the applicants. Um, so um, I, unless uh, the other panelists feel differently. Um, any thoughts? Sean, I'm just going to add in, yeah, our role is for the a review of these to answer your questions. And if there's any clarification we can provide. Um, other than that, it's up to the committee to do the scoring and the recommendations. Okay. Thanks very much, Virginia. Um, okay, I don't see any other uh, comments or questions, so maybe we move on to the next um, uh, applicant. The next one I have is the Arts Council of Algoma. Uh, I wonder if Miranda can lead us through um, that one. Oh, you are currently muted. I was just mumbling to myself about oh. <laughs> application. So I had, I, reviewing this application left me with a lot of questions. Um, again, I just, I felt like the descriptions are really um, sort of sparse. I would have liked to have seen more, I guess, more telling of successes and challenges. Um, and I would have liked to have seen the financial information organized in a more legible way. Um, but I'm curious to hear what other people have to say about that if other feel if other folks encountered the same feelings of frustration that I did with 
trying to trying to get through things. Um, you know, there's no there's no question that arts councils and and this council historically has been a real driver of arts and culture in the community. Um, and I think I just expected to expected to see more of that reflected in this application. Um, I also haven't heard a lot out in the community about the Arts Council and the efforts that they've undertaken within the last year um, and was hoping that this would clarify that a little bit more, but I don't, I don't think it did for me. Um, in terms of the scores, I think I was, I think I scored in a very critical way um, I gave, I gave an organizational and financial health of three, an artistic or cultural merit um, of three, simply because there wasn't a full accounting of all of the activities um, and a community impact of three. Uh, thank you, uh, Miranda. Next, I have um, Alicia. Um, I've had a, a similar experience looking at this. Um, in my opinion, the application, it wasn't totally clear. Um, it wasn't clear what the outcomes would be, what the work plan was, how it would be accomplished. And then um, I think if, if memory serves, um, they'd been accepting funding from other city sources as well. So I think I think if someone could clarify, maybe that'd be great. Um, but um, I had financial health at two, artistic and cultural at three, and community impact at three. Sorry, was that two, three, three? Yep, that's correct. Um, we'll, we'll go to, to staff on those clarifications in a moment, but first I wanna, I'll, I'll hear from Heather, uh, then I'll comment, then Andrea, is that the right order? Am I next? Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, I'm gonna echo exactly what Alicia and Miranda have said. Um, there's been no report submitted i'm assuming to date um for last year so i'm sure we can hear from staff to let us know if that's so i'm i'm, I'm a stickler for real sorry um and i was concerned about the, uh, the there was no listing of other sources of funding um i, I was concerned because i again i i agree i there was a lot in that application a lot of like you know the previous years of plans to do things I, I haven't heard anything like on social media or anything and again it could be some of its COVID we are living in a pandemic but at the same time um I haven't heard anything um I was a bit uh critical in the uh, organizational and financial health I gave it a one but then the other two were a three and a three so I think I'm pretty balanced with how everybody's feeling so far uh th thanks Heather um the uh um, and just, uh, I, I don't really have much to add uh, descriptive wise, apart from one of the concerns that I have um, is a bit of mission creep in the sense that arts councils typically, um, and I know because a long time ago I was involved in um, the arts council, uh, although many things change, of course, and that's, that's natural for organizations, but um, um, a big role of arts councils is really to be more facilitative of other organizations, artists, and so forth, where this um, uh, seems to gravitate more towards um, original programming, um, uh, which seems like uh, uh, many arts councils do, but it's usually in addition to other uh, services. So that's the only thing that I would add. Um, I also gave it a one uh, for organizational and financial health and then threes for the remainder. Andrea? Thanks. Um, yeah, I guess, and this is one of the things, you know, with many of these organizations and in future, um, future applications, I would like to find a way uh, that we can think about how do we, how do we evaluate organizational health, not just fiscal health? And I think that means, you know, is it, is, does the board seem to be operating well? Is it, does it have a, uh, the right amount of people on the board for the size. Um, if it's a membership-based or service-based organization, um, is it serving, you know, that base? Are, are they listing the numbers of people that are served by them? 
um, or their, you know, at least the numbers of their membership. So I think that's the other concern I really have about this, in addition to what Sean mentioned with the um, programming creep, because I think it is, yeah, it is problematic if they're focusing too much on developing content uh, rather than acting as a service organization and a connecting agent, uh, especially when we're, you know, that's been brought up as a really, as something that's missing. And if we if we haven't heard of the events that they've done themselves, then we're definitely not hearing the work that they're promoting that other organizations are doing. So, you know, to me, there's, there's some missing parts there. Um, so my scoring was uh, two, three, and three. Thanks, Andrea. And now I'd like to go to uh, Todd and and uh, if uh, Virginia or Kathy have anything to add after that. Um, but Todd, I know that that um, you had worked with the applicant and there was a question particularly around eligibility based on um, city serve uh, city in kind services, I think. Um, I'm not sure Virginia can talk to the in kind services. Oh, sorry. Um, if there's any specific questions, I could answer them. Um, we did uh, not receive the final report, which is reflected in the spreadsheet that we sent to everybody. So uh, I'm not sure if people noticed that, but that we we're unable to uh, secure that before this meeting. So um, that's about all I can say for that. I believe the board of directors list was also absent. Thank you, Todd. Um, Virginia, can you speak to the issue of the in-kind services? So um, I believe that they've partnered with Fringe. Uh, Fringe Festival does receive in-kind services through the city um, as part of their application. So there's a separate process where organizations can choose to have city fees waived if approved by council. And that happens in the fall. So each year we provide facilities for Fringe Festival at Roberta Bonder Tent and occasionally at Ermiting or Clark, depending if there's availability there, as well as the, um, any of the services, tables, chairs, or whatever they need to facilitate those events. Um, and I was just looking back at the financials. So you'll also see in your package that the post grant report that was included with the package. Um, it's the 2018 one, not the 2020, where they received $15,000 um, in funds for uh, their programming. Um, I'm just sorry, I was scrolling down. Yeah, I, I, I know that... Um, some of it was a little bit difficult for us to follow too with the financials. I think everybody was finding some, it, it a little bit more challenging and I'm looking sideways. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I don't know if that really helps provide that much clarification. <laughs> we, we still have some questions as well. Um, Andrea? Um, I guess, I mean, I might have missed this. So if an organization hasn't submitted the report, are they eligible? Um, they're missing components of the report. They, they, they're supposed to submit the post-grant report as well so that the committee has an opportunity to evaluate how the funds that we were given the previous year were used. Yeah. Um, the 30,000 that they're referencing in their income statement January through December, um, we had provided $15,000 in funding. Um, so the additional 15,000, I'm not sure what source that is from. Um, and the amount of in-kind services provided to Fringe are equivalent to approximately 5,000 in in-kind services, but Fringe is their own entity. Um, so they are a separate entity. Yeah, I, I just I think we get into problems if we don't like if we do have rules and then we change them for this, we either stick with them. Um, yeah, and any OIC application, if you're missing any component of what's asked for, it doesn't get looked at. So, I mean, if we try and just if not this time, at least in future rounds, 
and we, we, um, sorry, Andrew, just to, just to add in, uh, we did follow up to indicate what components were missing and we had, did request those documents um, to come in by Friday and well, as I needed to send those applications out Friday evening. So we gave some time to follow up in order to try to receive that information. But I, I guess then I would think, you know, then it's not really fair if they're not submitting a full complete application, then it's not fair to be even reviewing it. And because then if it comes in again in the spring with a complete application, then we're not going to be, you know, have the, have this sort of more biased experience. I think that's, um, I think that's an important point for us to contend with as the, as the committee. Um, would we consider this essentially a motion to withdraw um, the application from consideration based on the submission being in incomplete? Um, do, you need, do you need someone for a motion? Talk? Sure, yeah, <laughs> that'd be great. Uh, Heather moves. <laughs> Me. Um, is there a seconder? Uh, Andrea. Um, all those in favor, I'll actually do a roll call. Uh, <laughs> and, so. and then, Sean, if possible. Oh, sure. Yes. I guess just if there, if we come across any other ones that are incomplete, then we just do the same to any. Yes. Thanks. Absolutely. Um, I'm assuming Heather and Andrea are for the motion, uh, having moved it. Um, Alicia? For. Miranda? Four, uh, Jane. Four, um, and I think that's all of our regular members. Okay. Uh, oh, and I vote four as well. Um, so motion passes. Um, okay. Moving on to living history, Algoma. Um, uh, Kathy notes that she'll leave the meeting for about ten minutes due to living history, Algoma. Um, thank you very much. And uh, Alicia, would you like to begin this discussion? Um, sure. Uh, just my home life is impeding in the background, so I'll just oh, be brief. We can... Okay. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, just quickly, um, I had uh, given them uh, four across the board, uh, and mostly because it didn't seem like there was a contingency plan um, because of COVID. Um, that's what I have in my notes here. Um, and it wasn't totally clear what their outreach would be in terms of community impact. So I have four, four, and four, uh, but it was it was well-rounded and I was excited to see it. I was really impressed with this. Great, thanks very much. Um, next, I have Miranda. Thank you. Um, Ranking-wise, I gave this a four, four, and a five. Um, my notes say that I thought this application was, or this, initiative was comprised of people who are really well versed in the methods and the means uh, that they're undertaking to do in their work. And so I have a really solid feeling about the capability of the folks involved um, to, to do this work, to bring this project to successful fruition. Um, and I think that they've got great evidence of great governance and procedural roots, um, just given who, who is in the membership. Um, and it's nice to see sort of a, a diverse um, melange, I guess, of like arts, culture, and heritage represented in a single initiative. Thank you. Thanks very much, Miranda. Um, uh, I'll, uh, I guess it's my turn. Um, I um, had uh, similar sentiments. Um, I, um, had um, four, five, and four. Um, and I wasn't making super detailed <laughs> notes. Um, so I don't have a lot more to add than that. Uh, Heather? Oh, Heather, if you're speaking, uh, you are muted. Heather stepped out for this oh, one. Oh, Heather stepped out, okay. Oh, right. Yes. Sorry. Of course. Conflict. Um, uh, Andrea. Thanks. Um, yeah, I similar to other comments. Um, I did rate higher on community impact because I think it's not necessarily 
a flashy big event, but I think the importance of archiving these stories is uh, really important. So I had a four, five, and five for my rankings. Great. Um, now, uh, I know that, uh, uh, I think that covers everybody uh, so far. Um, uh, but I'm just going to check in again with Jane just to you know see how you're doing, see if you have any thoughts about the process so far. Um, uh, just because I know it can be tedious, and but you might have thoughts you want to share. I'm doing well, and I'm learning a, a lot. So you are good mentors. The question I wanted to ask, and not directly related to this one, but to all the applications, is there indication that if the application is not complete, it will be returned? Uh, thanks for that question, Jane. And um, um, I think that, especially based on the, the last um, uh, um, applicant and, and the discussion around that, the, the consensus seemed to be that um, if um, if it's incomplete, then um, it, it should be removed from, from discussion. Um, there's also certain um, eligibility criteria that um, we should also highlight, such as um, if they are receiving funds from the city already, um, then they are not eligible for this um, pot of funding. Um, but uh, Virginia? Oh, you are yeah. muted. I, okay. I was just going to add, it, it does indicate that they are um, required attachments. And we did make um, efforts to make sure that they were aware that they missed something. So generally, staff do like to try to work and say, oh, you missed this. Um, and we did give, um, there was about a week in which to submit the missing information in order to have the complete application. And up until, and Todd, you can clarify, we hadn't received anything as of today. If we had received something, we would have done it as an addendum to the package. Oh, and, and, and for your... Um... For your benefit, Virginia, um, the question was just more generally speaking, not necessarily related to the, to the Arts Council, but yeah. Um, but the, that's a fantastic answer. So so thank you, and also thank you to to staff who've done um, who do so much work in supporting organizations to access these these funding. Uh, does that answer your question? Uh, well, Jane, thank you. Great. Okay. So. Um, I think that um, we can probably, should we, while Heather is out, should we move on to um, uh, Sorry, am I? I think it was the Thinking Rock application that she had mentioned. Oh, okay. Should we move on to that one um, while we um, move on, or sorry, just so, to, so she doesn't have to lead twice. Um, and Miranda, do you have any second ones, that, or is it just this one? Just, um, just this one. Okay, so we'll we'll do the Thinking Rock, um, and um, then um, one of us um, will send you an, an email just to let you know um, yeah. to, to come back. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much. Um, okay. Uh, so I think that means that it's my turn um, to just uh, to uh, talk about Thinking Rock. Um, so uh, Virginia, we decided to jump ahead to Thinking Rock just so that Heather and and uh, Miranda don't have to wait as long. Uh, but you might want to let Kathy know that she can come back in. Um, here's that one, item number twenty one. Um, so for Thinking Rock's application, um, the, uh, uh, the overall, um, uh, uh, overall, I, I was very impressed um, with the application. Um, and, and also, one of the things that really stood out to me, um, and this speaks to some of the, the uh, comments that people have had about you know, evaluating artistic uh, merit as well, um, is that they demonstrated a significant amount of uh, time and energy within the application outlining that artistic merit. Um, so for that uh, category, I gave them 
uh, a five. Um, for um, organizational and financial health, um, I noted a four. Um, you know, I thought that the uh, all of the indications uh, were there that you know, really I could um, probably go higher than that. But I think that I was also being cautious. <laughs> um, uh, uh, and similarly with community impact, I gave a four only because it was contributing to a festival that several of the applicants have actually uh, are applying for funding for projects related to. So I thought that that kind of diminished the overall community impact, even though the project itself was very valuable and, and, and meaningful. Uh, I think it's something like three different applicants this, um, this round are doing projects in relation to the Summer Moon Festival. So um, I thought that um, the, um, you know, I think I originally had it at a five and then pulled it down to a four based on, uh, on that after the final review. Um, next, I'll go to Andrea. Thanks, Sean. Um, yeah, I, I mean, this is sort of the level of attention to detail that I would expect, this, I mean, for any of them, but especially for the, you know, really higher over $10,000 ask, um, you know, where it's not assumed that the readers of the grant know the work that you've done in the past. So um, I appreciate that. I rated higher on organizational health um, because I, I mean, and this is partly biased, but I do know that there's a tremendous amount of work uh, that goes into establishing uh, really good kind processes at that organization. Um, and I think it's also evidence in, in how they lay out um, the processes for making an artwork with community, um, but also in terms of the internal governance and financial responsibility. So, um, yeah, I'm five, five, four and a half. Sounds good. Um, Alicia. Um, I'm just going to put it out there. I think this is probably one of my favorite applications that came through. Um, it seemed really diverse and inclusive and the application, as already said, it was just phenomenal and the planning was all there. Um, I gave it five all the way across. Great. Um, with that, um, we don't have any other members who are present who wish to comment on it, I think. Okay, so um, yeah, I feel like I need to change my four to a five under organizational and financial health. I think that I was hedging because, you know, I was worried more with, um, you know, am I, um, I think I was overcompensating um, for, you know, how much I thought that the, the thing was strong, so. Um, that's my perception. Um, okay, so uh, I, I guess we can call Heather and uh, Miranda back in. Um, and is, is that something that you um, are, are doing or am I voluntolding you, <laughs> Virginia? I hope I'm not just shoving that onto your plate. <laughs> Oh, uh, I can't hear what you're saying. Um, but <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I sent a, I sent a, an email. I had it ready to go for you. Oh, okay, great. Um, okay, so the next one that we're going to s discuss is the Sioux Symphony Orchestra. We're going back a little bit, um, and uh, we're going to catch up. On just one note too, I think the, I mean, I'm sure you're not finished them, but the calculations on uh, column or row seven. 
funny. Oops. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Um, Oh, just a, a, a note, uh, Jane notes that she didn't receive a copy of uh, NOLA's application. Um, now, um, do we have, oh, we see Miranda back and Heather and Kathy are all back, wonderful. Okay, so now we've done a full tour and Heather, it's, uh, would you like to take us through Sioux Symphony Orchestra? Um, this one was interesting because this is uh, not, they, they really, really pivoted for COVID, I thought. Um, I was pretty, um, I, I, I was impressed, <laughs> I guess you could say. Um, I, I liked the fact that they were um, planning to reach, obviously, a vulnerable population in the Sioux and provide them with um, um, music. That really got to me. <laughs> um, um, and I don't think that, I mean, in looking at their application, um, I'm trying to see if I had any other notes. Um, no, I don't have anything. I think they met all the criteria. Um, I don't have anything to say that they didn't, um, submit everything they were supposed to. Um, they certainly have a breakdown for the uh, equipment purchases that they need. Um, I wasn't sure, um, with this group, if, they're musicians, like I think there's musicians that are on both sides of the border, and I don't know if that matters um, regard, uh, in, in regards to needing to pay musicians. I don't actually know the answer to that. Um, but I, I gave them, a, I gave them, um, I actually gave them, I gave them fours across the board. <laughs> so. Great. Um. Andrea? Uh, yeah, similarly to Heather, I thought um, the organization looked great. Um, and I gave them four, four, and five, uh, five for community impact. Again, not so much that it was flashy public impact, but uh, the sort of individual impact with the people that would be the audience um, having value. So. Great, thank you very much. Alicia? Uh, looking at my notes here, it's everything that you guys have said as well. Um, the stakeholders, um, like it's an underserved community, it's good partnerships that they've got, like they're pivoting. Um, I have five, five, and three, but I couldn't speak to why I have the three right now. So I'd like to change it to five, five, and four. Great. Uh, next I have Miranda. I thought it was a, a straightforward application. Um, they made the case really well for this project. Um, I appreciate the fact that though they are showing that they're carrying the loan, there are clear, there's clearly a plan um, in process for deficit reduction or paying off that loan. Um, and also appreciate that they're working on a reduced pandemic era budget. And that's part of what makes it realistic. They're not, they're not trying to um, do more than what they can. So big respect for that. Um, it all looks orderly and realistic to me. And I appreciate the fact that the budget provides opportunities for creative solutions to finding ways to get artists paid, um, to get the artists who are on the orchestra paid and to provide meaningful, innovative opportunities to engage the community in social activities that are also um, richly artistic. Thanks, Miranda. Um, is it my turn? Oh, sorry, one I, more thing. I didn't tell you my numbers. Oh, yes, yes, uh, that's. Four, four, four. Great. And, um, you know, I would add, uh, um, I don't have a lot to add. Um, 
everything that I could have said has already been said. That's the nice thing about going last. Um, so my numbers were um, four, four, and five. Um, okay. Um, we'll move on to Sioux Theater Workshop. Um, Alicia has declared a conflict with this. Um, oh, and then we'll do the Community Theater Center while you're away too, just to make things, um, sure. unless um, you want us to do them at the end. It, it doesn't matter to me. And, and if I'm perf being perfectly honest, um, like the conflict is minimal with the workshop. So, I mean, I haven't had anything to do with the application and I'm just part of their general membership. I'm not part of their board. Um, oh, but that's just different. Because of, yeah. Because, yeah, because of personal ties, I just felt like I didn't want to weigh in on that one. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, and then with the community theater center, I can pop out. So if I could just sit quietly and observe this, that's okay with me if that's all right with you, but if it's not, yeah, I understand. No, the, I wouldn't, like that doesn't meet the standards of the, the conflict of interest. Now, uh, of course, every member is, um, you know, if you had, if you were a board member and you didn't recuse yourself, we would ask you to leave. Um, but, um, you know, if you just don't want to comment because you don't feel like you can be objective, that's, that's within your right. That is um, fully where I'm at. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. Um, so uh, we'll just move on to the Sioux Theater Workshop and the next person that I have um, with that is Andrea. Okay, I had to keep myself um, very organized. Oh yeah, okay. So it's the Theater Workshop, Theater Ontario. That was the last year. So Theater Workshop. Um, I had them ranked at four all the way across, um, you know, long-standing organization. Um, I don't have specific notes with me, but it seemed like it was all, it was all good, um, but nothing sort of fully outstanding. Great, and, and uh, do you have scores? Oh, sorry, that's what I was saying, uh, four all the way across. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, that sounds. Yeah, I can I can try and find other, my other notes on it, but that's. Oh, that's good. That's, uh... well, I mean, sorry, if you want to, yes. I don't mean to cut you off. Um... Next, then I have Miranda. My scores are same. Um, and I, I took minimal notes because I found minimal, um, minimal critical points. You know, it's a long standing organization. Um, we do a diversity of good work in the community. There's evidence of like long standing good governance and financial management. Thank you. No problem. Um, the uh, next. Oh, yeah, the next person is me. Um, he, likewise, um, I uh, didn't um, similarly didn't didn't have uh, much in the way of of um, um, comments on on this particular application um, and I'll move on because I don't have more to add than what's been said uh, and I had um, I had three four and four but I actually feel like I have been haven't been I've been overly critical on the organizational and financial health I don't have any reason to believe there's any uh, based on the submission I don't feel like there's any reason for me to believe that there's a uh, um, uh, issue of any kind with their, their uh, financial health. I think sometimes the COVID situation did color my perception in terms of how organizations um, react in relation to that. But um, uh, overall, uh, this one seems very healthy. Heather? Um, the only question I have is, are they asking for operational and not so much like a project because i didn't i wasn't quite clear as to what it 
like are, what were they were out, out of all of the application items what they were asking for like is it just be, because they just need operational funds to just continue what they're doing i just maybe i missed something <laughs> uh, that's a good question i uh, i did in my notes i have them listed as operating but i don't know if um uh todd or virginia have other comments there nope that's what uh, we had as well operation okay um, do you have scores, uh, Heather? Sorry, wrong mouse. Um, I had, um, hang on. Um, I had, uh, I had, I had four, four, and four. Okay. Well, who needs these calculation tables? I can just do this. <laughs> okay. Um, next we have Art Speaks. Um, Alicia, would it's, I, if I'm going out of cycle, just let me know. Uh, but Alicia, would you like to lead that uh, that item? Sure, let me just find my notes here. Um, I don't have anything specific to say, but I have five, five and five across the board. I remember thinking this was a good application. Um, it was clear what was supposed to happen. Um, it seemed like they had the capacity to carry it out. And I was, I have a star here, like I really like this one. <laughs> so. Thanks very much, Miranda. Yeah, this application was so satisfying to read. Um, Art Speaks has been doing tons of very visible good work in the community. And they, they model sort of their guiding principles and practices in everything that they do. And I was not surprised to see that in the written component of the application. Um, very approachable, very accessible despite the pandemic. They've been extremely nimble and innovative with trying to connect across the community with different organizations to make this work happen and to make it happen in different parts of the community and to make it accessible for the people who live in those parts of the community and to extend their reach beyond the community by offering things online. Um, I've been, yeah, just the, 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 the budget, um, where it had been laid out to to specify the art speaks um, piece versus the financial statements there was tons of information there which was really helpful but um it it was a little bit difficult to read parts of that budget but no complaints like every everything there is good information um and the proposal is really well written there's just lots of evidence of good work there and um my scores were also really high the four five and five and four simply because um because of my issues with the budget but i i would bump that up to a five thank you very much miranda um i had uh very similar scores there's not much i can add um other than um you know i also had uh, four, five, and five, um, and uh, we'll move on to Andrea. Thanks, Sean. Um, yeah, I think it's, um, you know, they're doing very wonderful, visible work in the community. Um, my only concern was that um, the artist fees for the facilitating artists, especially considering the nature of the work, um, are a little bit low, I think. So, um, that caused me to do a 4.5 rather than five for organizational financial health, because then there's just that increased uh, sort of risk of, of burning out staff um, doing, you know, such intense work um, over a long time for inadequate pay. So give them the money so they can do that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Andrea. Heather? I agree. I really liked this application. It was so well done. And what a great project to reach such a vulnerable group of people in the city and and never has it been more important mm -hmm. so i think it's really good timing as well and they really did pivot and they've made they've made it accessible to everybody by putting stuff online like you don't even have to think about it you are there in the comfort of your own home like i just i gave them fives across the board i have i have no choose about it so <laughs> Um, all right, so the next one that we have is um, uh, led by Miranda. 
um, Sioux Community Theater Center. Oh, and um, Elise is going to uh, step out for a little bit and we'll message you as soon as uh, our discussion is done. I'll send you an email, Alicia. And thanks again um, for, uh, uh, to you, Virginia, and to all the staff who are helping out. Sure. So um, with this application, I'd love to hear from the folks on the committee who are parts of organizations that have bigger budgets and, and more complex um, fiscal pieces because the looking at the financials and the budgets um, on this application through through me a little bit. Um, so would love to get some feedback from from you all. Um, I think I think that the Sioux Community Theater Center, there's no question um, has been a big cultural pillar in the community. And there are there are quite a few important organizations that come around it to support it. Um, this this project i just i had some questions about it um and i'll you know try to articulate those in a good way but my my biggest question was like how many artists is this going to benefit and what is the reach going to be um and i just i felt that the application could have could have been written in a way that was stronger and been more convincing, um, just in terms of making the case for, for doing this project um, and how it's unique um, and how how it's going to advance, advance things. Um, in terms of the score, I gave it uh, fours across the board, four, four, four. Again, I think I just would have appreciated more detail in the narrative um, to answer some of my questions. Uh, thanks, uh, Miranda. Um, uh, I'll uh, move on to uh, I, I guess it's uh, my turn to comment as well. Um, I had similar um, uh, reactions, actually, Miranda. So I don't think that that um, you know your reaction is um, un, um, unreasonable based on um, the size of the budget or, or, or the the stature of the the organization. Um, I'm just uh, going back to it uh, again now. Um, I thought that the, I mean, I thought it was, it, it's challenging because it is, uh, you know, COVID and so theater is particularly hard. So um, uh, it's especially to generate revenue in ways that, that would normally um, uh, be uh, connected to that, right? So, so we see um, what looks like a, a 28,000 projected deficit for this year as, uh, within the budget, um, which is concerning. Um, and especially that um, the, uh, uh, there also a seems, uh, seems to be an accumulated uh, deficit. Now that is based on an August 31st end of year. Now, August 31st, uh, in 2020 was probably the absolute worst time to be getting your books done um, uh, as an arts organization. Um, so, you know, I, I bear that in, in mind um, in, in terms of the, the assessment here as well. And, and in terms of the, the project, um, uh, you know, I shared your, your curiosity around, around um, the reach and, and perhaps the appropriateness um, given the overall uh, situation of, uh, of the organization. Um, other types of projects might have been um, both more stabilizing and, and um, better reach. Uh, I'll, uh, so I scored three, three, and four. Um, next I have Heather. 
Okay, so I agree. I'm I was I think that it has a lot of merit in that they want to record and and create some type of virtual experience and content. My question was it can be used for YouTube and other platforms, but is it what is their reach? I agree with you. I I completely understand that that part for it is missing. I mean, it's a pretty I mean, they've they've, they've done their work on on figuring out all the things that they would need to accomplish it, but again reach and then with regards to the financials um i actually thought it was really good and in, in, in reviewing it it looks like they applied for the seba so they are looking at obviously getting covid funding to get them through and they have a that's their plan is to they're they aren't going to make any ticket sales so they're making sure that they can be financially stable for a little bit longer which i thought was really good because in comparison to the other statements i saw on a lot of other applications I don't think anybody else really applied for loans or wage subsidies. And I just thought that was a really, like they had, a, they have a plan to survive. <laughs> so, but I, again, I, I feel at the reach um, I had for scoring, um, I had four, four and three. Uh, thanks, Heather. That's a really good point um, about the SIBA as well. Uh, Andrea? Um, so, I mean, my big concern was looking at the, the proposal for what they wanted to do with the plan and they're spending most of the money on equipment, um, one fancy camera and a couch at $1,500, like that's a full artist fee. Um, so I just don't see, I think it could have a much more effective impact on their membership or on artists in their field. Um, you know, there's so many other things that could be done. And I, again, questions about the reach. So I scored them at four, three, and three. Thanks, Andrea. I think um, that's everybody. So um we can let uh, alicia know to come in and we will move on to um oh i guess i have to lead the next one the sioux theater workshop oh yeah yeah uh, alicia can come in for this the sioux theater workshop theater ontario festival this is a request for an extension so it's not quite the same format but i'll speak to it um and um we'll move on from there Um, maybe I can get started anyway, because I know that, that Alicia had expressed that she would probably not chime in on, on these related to Sioux Theatre Workshop. Um, uh, you know, generally speaking, I would say that any organization that received a grant last year um, could not have predicted what was going to happen. And it's um, generally, I would be as, as um, flexible as possible in terms of how that gets reallocated. My only concern here is that the, the reallocation request is actually not related to um, something with artistic or cult cultural merit. Um, you know, I, I do understand that it speaks to the larger um, uh, functionality of the space, um, which is important, particularly when you when you operate um, uh, spaces, um, but I wonder if this is the appropriate venue for uh, for those costs. Um, I, I, my personal advice would be that we go back to say, um, you can reallocate it, but not to that. Um, but that's my perception. Um, I would go to um, who's next, Heather. Oh, Heather, you're muted. Oh, two screens. <laughs> okay, I just have to remember what it was. Okay, so they wanted- Oh, sorry, to... it was bathrooms. Oh, it was bathrooms, yes. Um, yeah, I again, like, I, I'm on the fence about that. Like, I would like them to be able to, um, like, get the extension, because, I mean, no one could have predicted the pandemic. Do I think that it should be used for washrooms? Not necessarily, but I, in, in my personal opinion, I'm willing for it to be flexible 
um, and just saying, you know what, in the long run, if that's something that they need to do to make their facility better, um, when it's time to welcome back people, I, I personally am okay with that. You know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say this was something that we do all the time, but I think in the circumstances that we're in, I would be, for me, I'm willing to say that, yes, I think it's fine. Thanks, Heather. Um, next, I have Andrea. Um, so I guess my question is, is uh, capital improvements part of any part of the eligibility for the grant? If they're not, and we approve it this time, then, you know, we have to be open to it happening with any grant. So um, I also think, um, you know, the grant could be extended, but it has to go towards artistic programming. It can't go towards capital. Thanks, Andrea. Next, I have Alicia. Oh, you, you expressed earlier that you didn't want to comment on Sioux Theater Workshop, but um, uh, do you um, want me to, to be perfectly honest, I didn't really see, um, I didn't really understand what I was looking at when I was looking at this application. Um, right. I, I think maybe this wasn't complete and I didn't really understand how it fit or if it was being considered for this. So I'm just gonna step back if that's okay. No worries. And, and for context, uh, this wasn't uh, an application for this year. It was more of a request that last year's funding um, get reassigned. Mm. Um, which is why there's no accompanying package. Um, the, uh, uh, oh, who's next? Miranda? My understanding is that Theatre Ontario no longer exists. Oh. Um, I understood that the organization has actually been dissolved. And so it adds a layer of um, reasons why we can't complete the application as a, as applied for right so i think given those circumstances it's not just a hold back because of covid circumstance it's it's just the fact that the festival won't happen oh virginia sorry i'm just gonna add a little bit of clarification they applied last year in order to be the host for this festival so the money they're asking to hold on to is last year's funding if they were to return it it doesn't go to anybody else because it was a 2020 budget allocation for the city. Um, so originally when they spoke to me in the spring, they were at that point told that they would be able to host in 20, the following year in 2021. Obviously that's not happening. If the organization's dissolved, it's not happening. So it's, if they, we need to try to figure out what we recommend for them to do with the funding in order so that they can move forward with it. Yeah, and I would have to agree with Andrea and her recommendation on this. Like, I think that in a in a situation in a situation like this, where someone has applied to fulfill a wonderful artistic aim, which in this case was a like a provincial um, scope festival, um, it whatever they do with the money needs to follow suit even if it's not something as as big as that it needs to be something that fulfills criteria criteria of artistic excellence um and i think that i think that the alternative they've suggested doesn't do that for me thanks miranda um and uh i am going to go to you virginia and, and also ask if you can um uh, clarify andrea's uh question as well earlier which was um, is our capital expenditures eligible under this grant normally? We're, we're caught between the two. So it kind of would fall in that we could as not ineligible according to the old, the old um, application. But what we can do is we're gonna be having a committee meeting towards the end of February. Um, I can ask them to taking the feedback that we've received uh, see if there's something else that they may be able to come up with to present to the committee that might satisfy that creative and artistic expression um, and see what else they might be able to come up with before we make a decision. Great. Uh, Andrea and then Miranda. Yeah, I, I guess just for that sort of running list of notes for future applications um, that we in this because this applies when we're looking at grants where there's, you know, expensive cameras or computer asked the OAC has a has a set limit, I think, on how much can go into uh, equipment or capital expenditure, um, you know, with the aim of trying to make more artist fees happen. Um, so it's just something that we should think about making explicit. 
Miranda? Just to say, I'd, I would much prefer to be able to see the organization use the funding constructively to its benefit than, than for it to disappear or something like that, so. In the interest of, uh, of summing up and, and, and moving forward, what I'm hearing is that um, so far, everybody's in favor of them keeping the money. Um, uh, and I, I sense a slight majority in favor of it being dedicated to some sort of artistic uh, endeavor. Um, and then uh, uh, in contrast to uh, the um, uh, just, uh, an approval of of the uh, uh, of, of the request um, are so those are the really the two choices that we're we're making uh, choosing between here. Um, uh, Heather, you you were the first to raise the idea of of you know whatever they they should they can be doing. Let, let's let them do it. Um, um, uh, did you want to speak further to that, or uh, how how do you feel? Um. Now, in, in just listening to like say Miranda saying that Theater Ontario Festival, like if, if we have been looking at this if, if the anticipation of them hosting something, but if something that is not going to exist anymore, then uh, yeah, I mean, I don't want them to lose the money, but yeah, I think maybe if we can either A, find out if capital costs can be eligible, I think we should find out with a definitive answer. Um, I think Kathy put something in the chat. Oh, oh. Um, doesn't the old form right now state that capital projects are okay, but price quotes are necessary with the application? I think we should get a definitive answer either way, and then we know. Um, and yes, uh, to Andrea's um, comment, yeah, I think this is something in the future we should be definitive about. It's either a yes or a no, um, so we don't have this conversation again. Um, but yeah, I think if they could come back, if we could go to them and say, you know, maybe not capital costs, but something that's more to what the money is for, I just don't want them to lose it. Sounds you know. good. Uh, Virginia? Yeah, just, just to clarify, it, capital is available, um, but yeah, we do need to have, usually there's background information that they provide with it. They were already allocated the money, so that's why they're requesting that it be reallocated. But I can get some more information and it can be discussed at the February 20th meeting. Um, that sounds good. Or decision. Andrea, is your hand up? Oh, okay. Um, then we will move on to uh, Sioux Film Fest and we'll have Heather lead that discussion. Are we on Thinking Rock? Oh, sorry, we did Thinking Rock while you were out. Oh, okay, perfect. I, those are the, that one in Living History, the only ones that I, I had a um, conflict. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry, I should have said that. Um, we did it while you were out so that um, to save you time. Okay. Oh, you're muted again for some reason. Goodness sakes. Okay, we were on the Sioux Film Festival. Okay, That's right. I'm just gonna pull that one up, sorry. Okay, I know I had notes on this one. Oh no, actually I didn't have any notes on this one. I just have a score. So obviously I didn't see anything that was that popped out at me or I would have um, wrote it down. Um, I didn't see anything in here that caught me off guard. Um, perhaps others did. Um, I thought it was kind of cool that they managed to plan their first festival in COVID and were able to provide some of the festival and, you know, and thinking ahead that this is going to continue into this year, you know, and planning for that. Um, yeah, I didn't, I honestly didn't see any that popped out at me. So my numbers were four, three, and three. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm just noticed, um, recognizing Jane in the chat, uh, she has to step out for another meeting. Um, just wanted to uh, offer you the floor um, and, and also extend our appreciation and and uh, thank you so much for joining the committee. Thank you so much. I call Tuesday my Zoom days <laughs> because I've been having back-to-back -back meetings and I have another meeting coming up at seven o'clock. So I just wanted to take a break, refresh myself and then feel fresh for the next meeting. Thank you so much. And I look forward to working with you again. Thank you, Jane. Our meetings are not normally this long. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, 
And uh, uh, sorry, do I have those numbers right? Is it four, four, and three? Uh, okay. And next, Andrea. Thanks. Yeah, I, I also thought this was a great uh, new initiative. The financial health, I thought, looked really great considering it was new and great to see things um, emerging and that are nimble and adaptive in the current situation. Um, so I had it at a four, three, or sorry, a five, three, and four, um, you know, because they're starting off financially very well with good planning. Um, you know, I would like to see a little bit more about the plans for the artistic and cultural, you know, how films will be selected. Um, but overall, I think really great. And it could be like 3.5, I would say, because it's not quite a four, but it's better than a three. Um, and Alicia. Um, I have scores here of four, four, and five. Um, and I think that they stand for me. Um, Miranda. Sure. I think I had four, four, four. Um, I appreciate the fact that it's a COVID friendly event already. And so, you know, that they'll be able to, to shift as needed. Um, appreciate the fact that there is an initiative now celebrating the filmmaking community, um, and the traditions there in NC St. Marie. I, like their um, their focus on partnerships and community. So it's clear that they're working with Sioux College um, as well as a variety of suppliers and vendors and artists locally to kind of shine a light and bring local to the fore um, in all aspects of the festival, especially important during COVID, I think. Um, I really appreciated the presentation of their, their fiscals, their budget. Um, as well as the plan. It's always nice to see the folks behind an initiative leveraging their own funding to make something happen, like hopefully not going into a state of, of financial difficulty, but just showing confidence in the initiative. Um, really appreciate that. Thank you. Thanks, Miranda. Uh, I think that that covers uh, anything that I could uh, add as well. So. I also had four, four, and four uh, as my score. So the next uh, item that we yeah. have, oh, sorry. sorry, go ahead. Sorry, Sean, I just have to interject. I was just doing some counts. With Jane leaving, we're down to five of our 10 members. So we're lost quorum. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that, I, I'm just doing my double checks, so. Yep. Yeah, so we're down to five. So, but I bet you everybody's probably happy about that, <laughs> which means you get to catch a breather. And I think that uh, we could probably finish this up at our meeting on the 20th, do you think, instead of trying to schedule a special meeting? That's That seems fair. Um, the only question that I have in relation to that is, um, is there anybody, you know, banking on getting the funding before that, uh, before say March? Um, if we just, I'm just going to pull up the timeline and I'll let Todd answer because he spoke very, um, he had an opportunity to connect with the applicants. So Todd, I'll let you see if anybody's um, on a time crunch. Uh, no one mentioned anything about needing the money immediately. I think due to COVID, everybody has kind of a while back kind of parked operations or they're planning for later in the year because we had the second shutdown. Um, so I think most people were looking at that weren't connected to something that was already previously scheduled, moving around their dates and that to accommodate and allow for COVID. Um, so Nobody had mentioned in any of the conversations that they needed the money immediately. Okay. Yeah, and none of the applications that's here are tied to specific event dates that are taking place in February or March. So I think that gives us a little bit of flexibility. So what I can do is um, if we target the 20th, I think it may be hard to try to get everybody together again and then do another meeting. Mm -hmm. um, unless we try to do if you'd like, and sorry, Andrea, you have your hand raised? 
Yeah, I, I guess just as, you know, another thing that's coming up to go to the list of, you know, how we um, manage these in the future. I think having start dates, especially when we're having two intakes, so nothing, you know, that nothing that in the project would start until after March for the winter intake or after September for the summer intake. And that way we can, you know, make sure that we have sufficient time. Yeah, and I, th I think that's the intent with the double intakes is so that we eliminate any of those issues because with the old process, that's what we were finding. And unfortunately, we kind of got stuck in the middle of the two processes just with the final approvals um, with the new terms and not being able to, we really want to do workshops. So we're hoping in the spring, we'll be able to start doing workshops to kind of guide people through what the expectation are and what an application should look like. So yeah, that's a that'll eliminate any issues in the future. <laughs> which will be good. So fortunately, I guess with COVID, we're not going to, we're not running into that right now because nobody was planning any big events. But um, so I guess just quickly polling everyone here with the preference be to try to have a meeting specific just to finish this up and then get into all of our regular stuff starting on the 20th or just try to finish up everything on the meeting for the 20th. Um, I, I'm indifferent, but I saw hands nodding and I couldn't tell what it was for. <laughs> um, so I want to go to Miranda and then Alicia. I'm happy to do a special meeting in between just to get this done. Oh, I'm glad you said it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm in favor of that as well, just to, especially for those members who, um, you know, expressed that they didn't want to partake in this piece of it to then eat up two meetings and then, um, yeah. yeah. So uh, Andrea, do you have any preference? Uh, no, except that, you know, we just try and go through it nice and quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think now that the pro it's a lot of information for everybody to take in on the first meeting. So I think what I'll do is I'll send out a doodle poll. Um, we'll try to land on a date to finish this up. And then that'll also give uh, Katie and Jane some time to take a look through them. So they may be able to add in when we're actually allocating the money. Mm -hmm. um, and we can take it from there. So yeah, so thank you, everybody. Uh, you get to enjoy the rest of your evening. No more motions, no more roll calls because we don't have quorum. And I will be sending out a doodle poll very shortly. Great, thanks, Owen. I didn't check in with Heather, but I'm I'm, I'm assuming assuming you're 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 good with that. Yeah, I'm. I would prefer a special meeting just to get this piece yeah. done. Okay, great. Um, and. I just uh, want sounds... to comment to Virginia that Jane mentioned that she did not receive. The information from NOLA and I didn't either but I mean I'm not voting so Which, I don't know how many others didn't either. So did you get did you get um was that the only application you were missing? I just noticed when Jane said it so Jane was the Jane needs it more than me I'm I I don't need it. <laughs> no I know but oh, I'm just wondering if because if, if she was missing that, she's missing five other applications. So if she's only missing one, something weird happened because there was like five, approximately five attachments in each of the batches that I sent over the course of the four emails. So if it was just the one. Yeah, I have the email. Um... Cause Nola was with some other applications. It wasn't a standalone. Yeah, it was in the uh, email that had the Insectarium, Downtown Association, 44 Collective, Insights and Outsights, and the Strawberry and Moon Collective. Um, well, just maybe let her know, and I'll yeah, check my email. Yeah, I re I reforwarded the original email to her. We did. And it could. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going to. 